Well, welcome back, everybody. And I just wanted you to take another bit of a closer look at the golden sections you saw towards the end of this video. Uh, this figure was separated in the video, and you notice it was separated into four line segments, which all are golden sections. And it goes into the concept of the fact that these added together give you the next one and so forth. But they don't recognize or talk about the fact that these four sections, when you divide the one consecutively next to it in length by the smaller one of the two, you will get the answer phi to that division. And we're going to examine that a little more closely. But this is what's crazy about this throughout nature. As you can see in this particular diagram, if you take this particular shell and you take these four golden sections and mark them off on the interior of the shell, all these lengths are golden section lengths. They proportionally fit together such that the lengths divide consecutively to give you phi each time. Okay, the shorter one divided into the next one to it, the longer one, okay? And if you look at this on trees, for example, the growth of the width of a tree from its top down through its trunk area, the, the lengths of the, the, the uh, branches where the leaves are appear to grow out in such a manner that they are golden sections as well. So you see this everywhere in nature, all right? And you can draw this spiral as you're going to see in the next video you're going to watch from Dr. Berger. Uh, but we'll save that for that. But these are all examples of things that you realize involve the golden ratio. By the way, the spiral, that looked familiar? We use those, right, to discuss the concept or, and develop the idea of uh, the Fibonacci numbers. And we found out that the consecutive Fibonacci numbers do indeed divide to give us also the golden ratio as you get further out in the list. If you go back here, remember we did the pine cone as well? And so there's a lot of stuff here that involves the golden uh, sections and the golden ratio. Now, Ed, at the end of the movie, talked about this particular painting, and he showed that some of the segments divided to give you phi, all right? For example, GE divided by FE there, or EA, excuse me, gives you phi, and just like, uh, just like EA divided by FE also gives you phi. Sorry about that interruption there. So these are all examples of artwork and things that people have done that involve the golden ratio and golden sections. All right. So, all right, let's move on. Okay. Now. Oh, I want to share again. Hold on. I want to go back. So let's go back to this. We'll share this. All right. Here we go. Let's go on. All right. Would you please bring out your sheet called Group Work 19? And would you also please get out your phone or a calculator so that we can do these tests on these various segments? What we want to show here is that these three segments right here are indeed golden sections. To do that, if you recall, what we have to do is simply take the shortest segment and divide it into the middle length one. So in other words, to show that A, B, and C, D could be golden sections, we take the length of C, D, 41.81, and we divide it by the length of A, B, so it'll be C, D, divided by AB, does that indeed give us phi? Well, I'll take my calculator right here. You do the same thing. So if we take 41.81 and we divide it by 25.84, I get 1.618034, and that certainly looks like phi. All right, let's do the same thing with the next two segments. Take the longer one, EF. Let's divide it by 
uh, the length CD and see if we also get phi. So if you take 67.65 on your calculator, 67.65, let's see, 67.65, and I divide it by 41.81, I get 1.618 which of course rounds to 34. So yes, I do get phi. So 67.65, divided by 41.81 does also appear to give us phi. And what is the third thing that has to be a characteristic of these three segments? The shorter one, 25.84, increased by the middle length one, 41.81, it should give me 67.65. And if you do indeed add those together, you will find that you do get 67.65 for the left-hand side of the sentence. So this checks out. So these are definitely golden sections on the first problem of group work 19. Now let's go down to the second problem. Are these golden sections? We want to prove that whether they are or not. Okay, so to do that, I'm simply going to, well, maybe I should check the lengths out first. If I take 29.75, the shortest one, add to it 37.9, will I obtain 67.65? Well, if you take your calculator, all right, and clear it and divide 29.75 plus 37.9, you do get 67.65. So it appears so far these fit the golden ratio. Okay, so therefore, what I mean is the property of golden sections. So the I got ahead of myself. I want to see if the segments consecutively divided by each other also give me phi. If they do, I'll know we have golden sections. So if I take 37.9, the middle length one, and divide it by the short guy, 29.75, do I get phi? Well, let's see, 37.9 divided by 29.75, I got 1.2739, and it keeps on going. I'm going to use my arrow notation. Hey. What's that telling me? These are not golden sections. Even though the two shorter lengths add up to the longer one, they are not satisfying the properties of being golden sections. Therefore, we can assume they are not. All right, let's go down to the third problem. Do you recognize these segments? I stole them right out of the movie. I froze framed the video and took the lengths of the segments and made a still picture out of them. And I put these lengths on them. Now, are these golden sections? Well, you know in the movie they were golden sections, right? They didn't say why they were, but they are. But you did know that segment one and segment two adds up to give you segment three. And segment two plus segment three did add up to the length of segment four. But are these indeed golden sections? Well, to check it out, I have to divide these to see. Well, let's take 23. Uh, let me change my color here for my writing so it's in yellow so that hopefully you can see it better. I'm going to take 23.3. I'm going to divide it by 14.4. So if you do that, if you take 23.3, and divide it by 14.4 on your calculator. Ooh, wow. Doesn't appear to be golden sections, does it? Ooh, I didn't do 23.3, excuse me. 23.3 divided by 14.4. Oh yes, 1.68055, well that's pretty close. It's 1.618, so it's pretty close to being golden sections. 
But guess what, guys? Did I cheat here, maybe? How did I cheat? Well, if you take these numbers and multiply them each by 10, this would be 144, this would be 233, this number would be 377, and this number up here would be 610. Do you recognize those numbers? Guess what? They're Fibonacci numbers, and they're consecutive Fibonacci numbers. And you know, as we go further out in the Fibonacci numbers, if you divide the bigger one by the consecutive one before it that's a little shorter, you should always get what? You should always get phi. Now, the reason I didn't get phi on 23.3 divided by 14.4 is we're not that far out in the series. If you go further out in the series, you do get closer to phi. So if we take 610, for example, and we divide it by 377, the last two on here, you get 1.618037, which is very close to phi. It, it starts to mess up a little bit at about the seventh decimal place. So you know these are indeed golden sections or darn close to it, okay? Now, before we go into the next video that Dr. Ed is going to talk to you about, I'd like to take a minute to have you walk back in your mind to what you learned in middle school about two figures that look like this. Yes, those are triangles. Yes, they are scalene triangles, but they kind of look alike, don't they? One's kind of a shrunk down model of the other one, right? Well, when you have two figures like this that look alike, but one's a shrunk down model of the other one, they are said to be similar. Similar. These are called similar triangles. Let me change the color here. Similar triangles. Now, what must be true in similar triangles? Well, if you recall from middle school and early high school years in mathematics classes you took, if this side is length A, this side is length X, and this side is of length Y, and if in this triangle I have a T, a length M, and a length W, if I were to take the corresponding sides, the sides in these triangles that are in basically the same location, and write a ratio of them, A over T, Guess what? If I compare them in the same order, for example, X to its corresponding side, M, and if I take Y and compare it to its corresponding side, W, in the other triangle, all those ratios should come out exactly the same. So if two figures are similar, their corresponding sides have the same ratio ratio, excuse me. So the triangles are said to be proportional to each other because their sides are in proportion to each other. All the ratios are exactly the same value, so therefore you have a proportion, okay? Now, is that true if it's just triangles? Is it true if it's like rectangles? Well, let's go down here. If these two rectangles are similar, it would mean that this side x over here, if I compared it to its corresponding side in the figure on the right, I'll call it t. If I got the ratio of x to t, it should be exactly the same ratio if I did b over here to m over here. So, Two rectangles are said to be similar to each other if the ratio of their corresponding sides is exactly the same. Now, Dr. Ed is going to talk to you about some of the weird properties that exist when you take a golden rectangle and you pluck out of it the largest square possible from one corner, okay? And he's going to talk about the fact that some similar relationships seem to occur. So at this time, I'm going to sign off once again, and we're going to switch over, all right, to watching Ed's video in relation to this topic.
So I'll see you all in a few moments after we get done here. Whoop, I can't seem to shut this off, but I'll get her shut off. And we will see you soon.